G'day, it's Paul from Derivant. Today we're going to explore a little bit on design and composition and then we're going to apply that into a little bit of a watercolour that I've drawn up. So fundamentally, if we think of the rules of composition, what we, what we really don't want is something in the centre of our page. Okay, so let's just chuck in mountains or whatever here. Um, what would be better is if those sorts of things were off to one side. Okay, so rather than being slap bang, throw them to one side so we have a lead in. Um, the other thing is if we've got objects where there is an actual direction. So for portraits or for jugs or boats or animals, where there is, so if we have animals into the picture like this, so have a silhouette of a cow there. See how there's more space in front of him. So he's always leading into the picture. Um, if we have it, where that is butted up against the edge of the page, it's just awkward to translate. So when we have those sorts of things that come right up to the edges of the pages, it just doesn't look right, okay? The other key thing is to not have things pointing to corners, we need them to lead people into the painting, not out of the painting. So we want to go in to the painting, not out. And we need to have people to wander through. So we need to create almost a Z type pattern through it. Um, so that we're taking the viewer into the picture along the road and out. Um, we can do that in all sorts of ways. The other thing is when we've got repeated shapes, so if we've got, you know, lots of trees or fences or things. We don't want them all repeated like this. This becomes a pattern. We don't want to create a pattern. We really want to create a painting. So we need to muck up those things a bit or distort them. So if we spread the way they're joined, if we change the lean of them, if we point them around, it's going to look much better and much more believable. So all the bottoms of these that are in line now have a bit of a sway to them. There's nice little spaces along. So rather than being a simple pattern, it's becoming a painting. So <clears throat> let's have a look at how we can put that into practice. Have a look here at this. If we take out the tall tree there, we can see that all of this is collected into the bottom. So our brains really flatten things off. So just this discord or this change of shape is really important. Um, if we have a look at this next one, um, just these people, if we don't have this side, can we see that that becomes too solid and too full on? So we need a rest area or a, a break and this is also sending people around so we can come in here and we can go somewhere. So it's giving us a bit of adventure or, or somewhere to go with the picture. Um, the other thing is our brains always crave line work. So with watercolour, we can actually, unlike those last two where we were relying on the line work in those was created, if we bring this back, this line work's created with the actual paint. So in this one, there's line work in here, but this is done with a felt tip pen afterwards. So it doesn't matter whether it's with that felt tip pen or with the paint. Um, the main thing is if you're going to use a felt tip pen, make sure it is a permanent pen. But we're just going to show you nice little neat ways of creating quick grabs of journeys around. So you can take this with you when you're traveling or when you're out bush. Um, so I've got a photograph today that I'm working from 
and it's just a couple of bars and I've actually drawn it up earlier on so I'm just going to grab that so let's just pop this here so I've got my reference there to the right and I've oops I've already drawn it in so if we grab our palette <coughs> now remember the main thing is um, don't use a color on its own just dirty it with something so I'm gonna throw a bit of a sky in here so I, I've just got a bit of French ultramarine and I'm just gonna grab that tiny bit of magenta not really to change it from being blue but just to add something gonna just test it there it's still a bit mauve so I'll dig into here once I'm happy with what I've got just gonna drop that I want it a little bit paler and actually I'll just grab a bit of that dirt that was left over from the last picture we'll just drop that through the sky other thing is to leave gaps and spaces in it and come over your drawing it's it's quite okay because as that dries off it'll do its own thing I also don't want to I'll just take a bit of that up don't want to get too bogged down with um, making sure that all the paper is covered I actually like these spaces here and where we've got small sort of almost holes it's where there's raw paper we don't have to cover all the paper um, although we've wet all of that sky so whilst that's drying I'm going to come to just the dark parts of the buildings now Now with watercolor we can start with big light washes and build it up I tend to try and go straight in um, it's just a thing there's not one is better or worse but if we can establish some of the darks and remember watercolor always dries lighter so we've got this opportunity to change things as we go along now the main thing is to make sure that we change that mix it doesn't really matter what it is I've just mixed up a dark brownie color there but I wanted I wanted a bit darker and a bit blacker than that so I'm just grabbing darks across there at random don't panic too much about what the colors are just grab dark colors as you see them um, in here it's going to be the open part of this shed here so we need to just think of spaces as we go so think of the negative space around which is a space around the object as well as the object itself they're both as important as each other and I'm just going to work straight across so we're linking those tones so we're joining the shapes and at the moment it doesn't matter if they're a bit rough and ready I actually want them a bit rough and ready it'll help in the end Now as we come further over here, I'm just going to change that wash to this light piece of grass that's through the middle of this paddock here. 
and just let it join in. And leave these funny bits of white coming through. We don't want a big solid mass. So I'm just taking this through to the side of that next barn, <coughs> which I've just made a bit bluer. And at the moment, it doesn't matter if things run into each other. In fact, it's good if they do. It's a very dark shape there. Dark things happening there. Now, while I've got that nice dark, I'm going to just plonk it into here. And back into the side of this one so we can tell that's an open barn. Bits and pieces happening. Now we've got the side of these other tall buildings in the back. Which were old weatherboard houses. put small marks that suggest detail. We don't need to state detail, we need to suggest detail. And if some of those edges bleed into each other, that's actually a good thing. So ju just let them bleed. Um, we'll use that as we go along. The main thing is to judge when it's okay to go back in and fiddle with things so that they don't um, bleed on their edges. And that's just a matter of experimenting and working over time. Remember to preserve the white paper here and there because it's those little silhouette pieces that really create interest. And see here where we've just done that, what will eventually be a corner post. Um, it's not perfectly straight and we don't want it perfectly straight. We want it a little bit wonky. 
us. It's actually going to do a better job for us. going to put a bit of a, I'm going to make this roof a little bit more rusty than it is in real life. Just try that down there. So we follow the form of the object, so it's corrugated iron on these, so we're just going to give it a suggestion of those things. Remember not to go over that tree, so we're preserving that silhouette. Uh, some people use masking fluid, I don't. I paint around things, no matter how fine or how uh, tight the detail is, I just paint up to it and around it. for me that rougher edge just has a more painted feel to it in the end. There's a nice dark shadowing under this edge. So the more we can interrupt shape or create those pieces of junk that lie around, the better it'll be. It's sometimes quite hard to interpret those complex areas of shape. So we just need to state those things gently. So by just playing with shape and joining the tones, the picture will slowly emerge. And not getting too bogged down with detail at this stage, we'll, we'll come into it and play with it a bit more. But right at this moment, we just need to sort of just plonk things where we to happen. Oh now, there's a little bit of a light roof just in here. I'm just going to spread that that we've plonked. Okay. And then there's this roof in here. So can we see how by linking all these, it's held that composition together? So this tone is the same as that, and it is also part of the ground. So we don't think that this is part of the side of that building. Our brains will unlock those links, but you must link those things together. Um, it'll keep the continuity of the picture. Um, if we don't do those things and paint them as individual objects, that's when the painting looks strange. So wherever you can, just let edges dissolve into each other and they do in the photo we can't see all those edges so if we can't see it don't invent it
and I'm just going to put this front bit in really broadly. So just because we need it as a lead in. And what we don't want is parallel lines, so we don't want things all lining up. We need it to take us through there. So we just give it some sort of suggestion of interest there. And on the back edge of that, there's just some other level of paddock through here, but it's got much lighter grass. We're just going to take that right the way through. and drop a little bit into here just to push that colour a bit. Now, I can block in those trees now that that sky's dried down a bit. So, we're going to plonk in the trunks But at the same time, let that trunk join to the foliage. Don't do it as two goes. Put it in as the one object. So we don't want to paint foliage, then trunk. Do it all in one go. That might sound a bit strange, but just do it. Um, it's going to make it look more believable. Now, these are gum trees, so the foliage always has this leaf form that has almost these mushroom shapes that come down and through. So, so long as we get this tonal jump between things, so we want really dark and really light. Usually with watercolour, people don't go dark enough. You've really got to punch in those darks. They'll dry back, put them on darker than you think they need to be. Just going to drop in some other detail here.
Now I've got a dark fence running through the middle of here and it's important that we don't have a big puddle of flat colour to represent that. It needs to change along the way um, because they do. It's, uh, we also got to make sure that it's dried off enough that it's not going to cauliflower. I actually don't really care if it does have it, some soft edges through it, but we need it to, to be representative of that fence. Don't make them all stand up like soldiers. Don't make them neat and tidy. We need to keep a good pattern and rhythm to what's happening. And there's just this immense amount of farm junk here, so which is always exciting. Now through here, just test here that it's dry enough. See how it's bleeding through the bottom of there? I don't actually care that it's bled through there. We can just grab a bit of it and let it bleed. Um, down lower here, it's quite dry, so I can actually put in the details of these posts through here. They're, they're gonna actually sit. And then change to whatever. Doesn't matter what it is, just so long as it's different. Just to suggest the tufts of this grass through here. Grab something else that's somehow different. And just build up that little bit of change that's in there. All the time keeping a nice pattern and rhythm to what's happening. A nice little crest that comes back and in here so we we'll like to see if we can accentuate that a bit because it's a nice little play of curve here comes in and around and then just chuck it on don't be too precious it's only a bit of paint Now we just need some bullet point darks to sort of punch those buildings up a bit. Punch them up as in bring out the detail. And then you'll probably let, need to let it dry off uh, because it will change as it dries. It'll get lighter.
Now, I'm going to plonk in those tree, other trees in the back. There's a few to go in behind those. And again, just follow the form of the object. So we need to be careful with the shape. to start with. Gently meaning, in this case, a lighter tone, um, but we still want a deliberate mark. Just make a mark. A deliberate mark is always going to read better than a hesitant patch. So again, just continuing that foliage into the trunk on here and preserving those whites that we had. We'll grab these trunks, down into here. We've got more foliage and I'm just going to change that green so we can see that it's another tree in behind here. just adding just a darker colouring behind here so that where it goes down and in between these two buildings it's quite dark which will help give us the edge of that front building Now there's one last shadow on here. Can we see this through here? Just going to state the suggestion of that, just fairly broadly. Um, we just need to represent those things, suggest them, not state them. So just broadly, it does this in here. The mind's eye will put detail into it. And there's another little post here that I quite like the interruption of this space here. I don't know what they are, but they just help to break things up. The more we can interrupt shape, the better it'll be. Now there was a post here too that was in the photo, so I'm just going to state that. Not sure what all those posts are, but let's put them in because they're there. Now, there is another dark over on this far building to the left, in under here. Well, I was just waiting for that roof to dry. And these are quite dark. Now, I'm still going to use this brush, but I need it fairly fine now. That's probably not dark enough, so we'll just mix up a dark, any dark. That's better. Still keeping it quite loose and chunky through here. A 
I'm just playing with tone. So tone is just how light or dark an object is. And we have a, there's a final little hill in the background there that you probably can't pick up, but I'm just going to plonk it in in a fairly strongish mauve. Okay, so there you have it. We don't want to fiddle too much more with that because it's quite wet. If you find that once that's dried, you need to go back and add some detail, then go and do it. But can you see how if we use just shape as design, those things start to lock together. The main thing again is make sure we don't have those parallel lines. So if we see here, these all have a nice natural rhythm to them and that none of these things line up. They're not in the centre, the fence posts are all higgledy-piggledy and it has a sense of place. So I hope you enjoyed that and happy painting. Thank you.